Hi, welcome to the 14-day weather forecast. The last week has brought the hottest day of the year so far. Friday the 19th of July saw 31.9 Celsius recorded at St James's Park in London. Despite that, July has actually been cooler than the 30-year average to date. 15.7 Celsius on the TWO tracker is below the various 30-year averages. Will that change as we head through the next two weeks? As usual, I'm going to start with the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 23rd. And at the outset, there are a few showers dotted around, but there's a ridge of high pressure building up from the Azores, north eastwards to the UK, so all in all, quite a lot of dry conditions to be found. But as I run this sequence, we see quite a mixed pattern developing, and through Wednesday, Thursday, some heavy rain pushing across the south or southeast, according to this, changeable. And then as we go into the weekend, GFS is showing some very heavy rain in, indeed, just to the south and the east of the UK. It's pushing northeastwards into continental Europe. I think it's worth keeping a close eye on the short range forecasts because if you have got outdoor plans on Saturday that really would put the kibosh on them if that rain was just to edge a little bit further northwards and eastwards towards the UK. I'll take a look at how the other models are handling that too in a moment. But just continuing this through to conclusion, what we see is high pressure to the south have an influence at times, but it's an Atlantic flow pushing across the UK, perhaps just at the very end, some warmer air moving up from the south, the southwest. But all in all, the isobars are packed quite closely together for much of the second half of the week. It's quite windy for the time of the year, at least, particularly in northern and western parts. Here's the uh, jet stream and upper air temperature profile and the mottled shaded area, which shows where the jet stream is, is heading right across the UK there, hence the fairly mixed setup. And as I run this, it stays there really for much of the time, maybe dipping a little bit south, and then later it buckles and heads northwards, and at the very end here, some warm air, some very warm air being pulled up from the southwest. So a lot's taking place through the first week and some of the details are very much up for grabs. A few of the forecast charts generated from the same model run. This is Wednesday the 24th. Temperatures not really far from the average. 23, 24 in the south, 17 to 20 there in Northern Ireland and Scotland. And some of the other models are really taking those temperatures a bit higher than GFS, which has been tending to be under forecast in maximums quite significantly recently. But lots of dry weather around, although with that said, there are some showers too. Forward to Friday, mostly dry according to this, similar temperatures. And then into the weekend, some showers around, some heavy showers, temperatures dipping a little bit. And if you remember, this is the time when the GFS has that heavy rain just close to the south and the east of England, although it's not impacting us according to this computer model run at least. Sunday, similar really, some showers around, but also a good deal of dry weather, temperatures not changing a great deal. And I just wanted to highlight that heavy rain on Saturday, at least some potential for it, because this is the, going back to the GFS, 15 GMT on Saturday, you can see it's just to the south and to the east. The yellow and orange shading, they're showing some real heavy downpours. But for the, the, most of the UK there, it's a showery picture of that rain just staying to the south and the east. With the Canadian model, the rain's also to the south and the east of the UK, if anything, a little bit further away and it's not so heavy. The European ECM though has it also perilously close to the southeast and East Anglia. The UK Met Office conversely has a more of a, an Atlantic flatter flow with high pressure centre to the southwest and that rain further away from the UK. So I think there's good agreement there between the computer models at the moment that that heavy rain is going to be bypassing the southeast and East Anglia, maybe central counties basically bypassing the UK completely, but it's not certain. So check the short range forecasts as the time approaches, particularly if you've got outdoor plans on a Saturday. Rainfall, these are the days not five aggregates from the ECM and GFS models. ECM on the left generally showing 
the highest totals in the northwest, in the west, but GFS has some relatively high amounts of rain being forecast for southern England, the southeast, and that's due to the um, area of rain which crosses those parts of the country on Thursday. ECM is not developing that feature in the same way, hence the totals there are lower. It's something else to keep an eye on, even at that very short range. The 0 to 10 day charts, not much has changed in southern and eastern Britain, but the values have continued increasing in the northwest, especially western Scotland, but both indicating the likelihood of a good deal of dry weather in much of the UK through days 5 to 10 of the forecast period. Now, in more general terms, how do the deterministic models compare to each other as we head towards the end of the first week? Here's the GFS, the ridge of high pressure air building up from the southwest on Tuesday. But the Canadian model, significantly different, a nasty looking area of low pressure just to the northwest. It's bringing showers or longer spells of rain to much of the UK. The German icon also doesn't look particularly settled there. We've got low pressure to the northwest extending its influence southwards. The ECM model looks quite similar. We could be, of course, with this type of pattern, pulling up some very warm air, very close to doing so in the south and the east. Finally, the UK Met Office global model, a little bit different, a flatter flow with high pressure to the south having more influence, weaker low pressure and it's further north than, for example, on the Canadian model. So <clears throat> taking them all together, quite a mix there, some significant differences, probably driest and warmest in the south, a chance of some very warm air being pulled up across those areas at this point. More changeable and settled as you head northwards and westwards. A chance though of the showers or long spells of rain pushing further south. Quite a lot of discrepancies there to be ironed out, so it's not possible to be confident unfortunately. Will that continue to be the case as we head through the second week? Well, as always, it's just about the trends and the probabilities of different scenarios developing. Here's the ensemble plot from the GEFS for London. Air to upper air temperatures across the top, so the value is at about 1500 meters above sea level. Above average for much of the second week, it's also worth noting that some of those runs are significantly above the 30 year norm. They could be indicating very warm air being pulled up from the south, the southwest at times. Although in general terms, one or two runs keep that warm air mass over the UK, but a lot of them are tending to fluctuate more, so not really becoming established. Although the number of rain spikes across the bottom is painting quite a dry picture, they do tend to, the number of them increases towards the end there, but all in all, not a great deal of rain. I'm a little bit uncertain about that though, because we could be seeing thundery conditions developing and they will tend not to be picked up very well on this type of plot. So the risk of some heavy downpours, perhaps through the second week as we develop thundery plume type patterns. And the ECM ensemble really just reinforces a similar message. There are a few runs here which bring in very, very warm upper level air. They're in a minority, but there are a few. They're climbing there above 20 Celsius and those temperatures at the 850 HPA level could suggest that the values down at the ground level would be well above 30. It just really emphasizes the message that we could be seeing some significantly warmer conditions pushing into at least the south, the southeast on some days through week two. And going back to the two meter temperatures based on the GEFS ensemble data, quite similar to recent output, Lots of red there, those are runs going for 26 to 30, a little bit of a pinky red later on, those are going above 30 Celsius, and lots of a 21 to 25. So all in all, the daytime temperature is close to or above the norm. I think this could be masking variance between, uh, the, diff between the days as we go through week two. And I'm just going to emphasize that message. I wouldn't be at all surprised if in the southeast, 
some of those days turn out to be very warm. Nighttime lows stay in, in double figures universally according to the GEFS. Up to Manchester, close to average, 850 HPA temperatures and more rain spikes on the bottom part of the plot. So it's cooler and more changeable as you head for the northwest. That's reflected in the two meter temperatures as well. More of the yellow there, those are runs going for 16 to 20, still quite a lot of the 21 to 25 and the nighttime lows a bit down on the London ones, more pleasant for sleeping in the northwest probably. Here is the final ensemble plot for Glasgow, close to average, across the top there, and there are more rain spikes along the bottom than there were on the previous two charts. So it's a wetter pitch from the northwest, cooler because the averages are, are of course lower. Here are the two meter temperatures for Glasgow, some of the yellow there, maximums of between 11 to 15. The columns mostly though in the 16 to 20 bracket and the nighttime lows down on Manchester, which in turn were down on London. So this is a place where the most pleasant sleeping conditions are likely to be found, at least on those, out of those three locations. Now, rainfall through the second week. The ECM chart showed the chance of five millimeters or more of rain falling on each of the first three days of the second week. Highest in the west and especially the northwest lower as you head southwards and eastwards. The same general pattern for the following three days, but the percentage chance has increased everywhere really, so perhaps a greater risk of wetter conditions through the second half of the week. The GEFS mean surface level pressure plot for Friday the 2nd of August has high pressure building northeastwards from resource having some influence across the southern half of the UK. That's where you would expect the driest conditions to be if it's right. But remember this is generated by averaging out all of the individual runs within the model. Therefore it is masking a range of possible outcomes. The European ensemble plot similar, high pressure air building up from the Azores. But I just wanted to finish by showing the ECM deterministic chart for Friday the 2nd of August. So this is just a snapshot. But a number of uh, computer model runs in recent days have shown something similar. Low pressure there to the west, the northwest, and ahead of it, very warm air being pulled northwards from North Africa, southern Europe, up towards the UK. The possibility of some high temperatures there and thundery conditions not far away. So to summarize, week one, changeable. Showers or long spells of rain are likely to be the most frequent in the west and the northwest. Fine periods focused on the south and the east. With that said, there is a risk of heavy rain at times in the southeast, especially on Thursday and maybe Saturday. Although most of the computer model runs are keeping Saturday's wet weather over continental Europe. But if you are planning outdoor activities, keep an eye on the short range forecasts. Temperatures fluctuate, warmer in the south, cooler in the north. Week two, quite changeable with dry periods, mostly frequent in the south. Temperatures once more vary in, but there is that chance of it becoming very warm or even hot on some days in the south and the east. The risk of thundery periods therefore could be increasing. So there we have it. Quite a mixed outlook I think on the whole. Some fine periods, some rain. The chance as we head through the second week of it turning very warm or even hot in the south and the east and that brings an associated risk of thunder. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then as ever, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel if you've not done so already. Remember as well to stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.